So I just explained how Justin Amash is uh, is going to run for president. He wants to run as a libertarian. Well, uh, corporate Democrats are really, really flipping out at the prospect of somebody who's running who is not Trump, who can get even 1% or 2% of the anti-Trump vote. Um, here's former Senator Claire McCaskill, a Democrat, a corporate Democrat extraordinaire, uh, she's going to weigh in on his run. And the reason I'm showing you this is because this is indicative of all of the neoliberal corporate Democrat um, talk about Justin Amash's candidacy. Watch. The noise you heard yesterday was a confetti cannon going off in the White House when Justin Amash announced that he was running for president. Every single anti-Trump vote needs to be focused on the viable candidate for president. Every single one. Uh, we do not have room for error in this election. This is no time for a Ross Perot or a Jill Stein or a Ralph Nader. Look at how entitled they think they are to all the votes that are uh, against Trump. Look at how entitled they think they are. It really is amazing to watch that, to see the psychology in action. Like, no, there are plenty of people who don't like Trump who also, under no circumstance, would vote for Joe Biden. They can't wrap their mind around that. They're like, what do you mean? I don't understand. If you're against Trump, obviously that means you're going to default to whoever the hell the Democrats throw at you, right? No, not if that candidate actually kind of agrees with Trump on maybe a majority of what he fights for. Like, no, I ideologically disagree with Trump. It's about the policy, so you can't give me somebody who's willing to meet the Republicans halfway on goddamn everything Somebody who voted for NAFTA, voted for Graham Leach Bliley, which repealed Glass-Steagall, voted for the Iraq War. This is who Joe Biden is. So there are plenty of people who are against Trump, but also would never vote for Biden. They can't, they literally can't wrap their minds around that because in the circles that they run in, that's not a thing. It just doesn't exist. And also, again, listen, the assumption, the and this is what it is, an assumption that, oh, Justin Amash is going to take more votes from Biden than from Trump. That's not true. We have no idea if that's the case or not. Because on paper, Justin Amash, he's very libertarian-leaning. He was a Republican congressman, now he's an independent. But like, on policies, he's leaning, he's a, he's a right-leaning guy. That's what he is. He's not as pure of a libertarian as, say, Ron Paul is, but, you know, he's good on NSA issues, he's good on Patriot Act issues, I think he's bad on economic issues. But like, he agrees way more with right-wingers ideologically. So it's very possible he gets more right-wing votes. So, you know, that would help Joe Biden, theoretically speaking, if we want to play that game of the spoiler thing, which I generally don't believe in the spoiler vote for a variety of reasons that we can get into. But if you're so inclined to think that way, that, oh, there's the only two options is uh, Donald Trump and and Joe Biden, and so you have to divvy up the votes around the country based on that, um, then it might be the case that this guy who you're slamming actually is helping you with your end goal of defeating Trump. That's very possible. I mean, it's possible it goes in the other direction, too, uh, because this guy is now a resistance hero because he left the Republican Party because he supported impeachment of Trump, and he's anti-Trump, so it's possible that that wealthy suburbanite crowd that would go to Biden does go to Justin Amash or people who would lean in Biden's direction go toward Justin Amash. That's possible too. Um, but we don't know. But it says everything that look at how entitled their response is. It doesn't get more entitled than that. That like, well, you have to get out because we own those votes. You don't own Dickie McGee's acts. You don't own anything. But that's the mindset is we don't have to earn anything. We don't have to go out to get it. It's just like it's ours by default. And if you get in the way of that, you're the problem. Now, now here's the important point, though. And this this is one that they'll never concede to. And they haven't even thought about it. They don't care because, again, they're entitled. But she brings up like, oh, Ross Perot and, and uh, Jill Stein. And Jill Stein is not responsible for Trump winning and Hillary Clinton losing. And that's not my opinion. That's a fact. They've actually done... They did polling on this at the time so that we would know whether or not Jill Stein and Gary Johnson were responsible for um, Trump winning. And the fact of the matter is, it, it's not a high percentage of Jill Stein voters. I forget, it's somewhere between 10% 
and 20% of Jill Stein voters who said, oh, if Jill wasn't in the race, I would vote for Hillary. It was only 10 to 20% of her voters. And when you crunch the numbers on that, that's not enough votes to get Hillary Clinton over the top. It's just not. It's just not. Now, if, if the poll results came back and it was like 80% of Jill Stein voters that openly admit, yes, if she wasn't in the race, I would vote for Hillary. Yes, in a situation like that, maybe it would be fair to say, oh, you helped Hillary Clinton win because your own voters said I would have voted for her if it wasn't for you. But that's not what they said. You had like 10 to 20% that said I would support Hillary. Then you had a giant chunk saying I would stay home. Then you had a roughly similar number that said I would have voted for Trump if it wasn't for Jill Stein. Or and some Gary Johnson, too. So... They don't care. It's the same thing with uh, Ralph Nader in Florida. Did you know there are more registered Democrats in Florida that voted for George W. Bush than there are Nader voters in Florida? Think about that. The Democrats have been melting down and screaming and moaning for decades at this point, saying, oh my God, Ralph Nader is the reason why Al Gore lost Florida, which means... Al Gore, or that Ralph Nader is the reason that George W. Bush is president. This is what they've been saying. But why are you just ignoring the, there are more Democrats who switched over and voted for George W. Bush in Florida than there, than there are Ralph Nader voters. Why aren't you blaming them? See, because it's all, they don't like the third parties. They don't want there to be third parties. They feel entitled to every single vote. So they're going to scapegoat. And this is how they scapegoat. So as much as I have ideological disagreements with Justin Amash, and as much as he's not my candidate, I mean, this over-the-top rhetoric where, you know, they blame him if Trump gets a second term, which makes no sense and there's no evidence for that, and they consider him a spoiler, it's just, it's so gross. And it shows you how they think. They do not feel on any level that they have to earn votes and that the onus is on them. They just feel like, the default position is I win. And if I don't, then you screwed it up for me. So look at how they flip the responsibility. It's disgusting. But anyway, that's a great example of how they think. Remember, this is Claire McCaskill. She's a corporate Democrat who lost to a Republican. And then now she goes on all these news shows and explains to Democrats, let me tell you something. Let me tell you how you win. All right. I'm going to I'm going to tell everybody because I'm an expert on this. I'm going to tell everybody what we got to do to win as Democrats. Bro, you just lost. You just lost. She's lectured the left endlessly. Let me tell you. See, I know. No, you don't. You just lost. You should teach a class on how to lose because that's all you got. She was beaten by Josh Hawley, by the way, who's a more one of the more populist Republicans. So she got outflanked in some ways on the left on some issues by Josh Hawley. And now she's going to go on TV and say, well, what we need to do is be more corporate, and more neoliberal as Democrats to win. It's a joke, man. This is a joke. MSNBC and CNN are corporate Democrat propaganda. That's what they are. In the same way that Fox News is Republican propaganda and Trump propaganda. Don't get it twisted. None of them are fighting for you. None of them are, are going to stand up for what you believe in. And they keep exposing themselves over and over. So believe them when they tell you who they are.